We begin on the devastating terror attack overseas. In Russia, citizens are observing a national day of mourning for the 137 people who were killed in an ISIS attack outside of Moscow. Foreign correspondent Deborah Pata starts us off with the latest. Investigators surveying the smoldering wreckage of the aftermath of the weekend massacre near Moscow. On Friday night, armed men in combat fatigues burst into the Crocker City Hall, a popular concert venue, and methodically began shooting the audience before setting the place ablaze. Videos posted on social media show people screaming and ducking for cover as the gunmen fired round after round of automatic gunfire. Someone shooting here, this man says. The hall is burning. They've set us on fire. Outside, the building was engulfed in flames. Inside, concert goers tried to escape the relentless gunfire, trapped in a crush of panicked people. Another video shows assailants moving with deadly intent through the complex as they gun people down. The full extent of the horror quickly made clear by a growing line of body bags. The attack comes after the U.S. shared intelligence with Russia, warning that ISIS was planning to strike and advising its citizens to stay away from concert venues. But this week, after a questionable landslide election victory, President Vladimir Putin dismissed the U.S. warning as outright blackmail. In a televised address on Saturday after the carnage, Putin told a shocked nation that 11 people had already been arrested in connection with the brazen attack, including four gunmen. And despite the fact that ISIS has claimed responsibility, he used the opportunity to bolster support for his war in Ukraine, now entering its third year. The assailants were moving in the direction of Ukraine, Putin claimed, where they had a Russian border crossing prepared from the Ukrainian side. It's a charge Ukraine flatly denies, and the U.S. has categorically repudiated. That was Deborah Pada reporting.